Hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started up the game and got a very basic plot ahead of us. Dr. Eggman has encapsulated animals inside of the robots. I forget if I've even mentioned that, but it was, you know, shown in the opening cutscene, so I didn't really need to say it out loud. And he's after the six Chaos Emeralds, trying to... Uh, get them so he can conquer the world or at the very least build a city named after him in this episode We're going through labyrinth zone, which is a very infamous level back when this game had lives uh, This is something this was one point where a lot of people would reach it and because of all of the horrible level design in this level they would die here and get sent back to Green Hill Zone and have to play through the first three zones over and over again just to get the just to attempt to get through this level again or zone rather sorry if I accidentally say levels or worlds or stuff like that because that's what they're called in most games uh, but Sonic wants to be cool and different so they call levels acts and they call worlds zones I mentioned this in a previous episode but just thought it you know, it was worth it to restate it. Anyways, at the last episode I promised that I would talk more about uh, weird, lo weird localization changes. Um, and you can't really talk about weird localization with Sonic the Hedgehog without talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog Bible. Which is the series Bible for the Sonic games. That basically is meant to give a backstory to you know, Sonic and why he's doing things and give a backstory to Dr. Robotnik, um, which is what they decided to call Dr. Eggman. Uh, basically, from the plot is, from what I remember, Sonic the Hedgehog, his real name is Sonny Hedgehog. He lives in Nebraska, I think. Um, his dad died in some weird, like, radiation related incident um, and so that's why he Sonic's all like pro environmentalist um, and one day Sonic who is just a or Sonny who is just a normal brown hedgehog um, he meets Dr. Ovi Kintobor which is just Evo Robotnik but flipped backwards and uh, Kintobor like decides to explain not really experiment on Sonic, but, like, have Sonic be sort of a guinea pig. Um, I think? Or something along those lines. I'll correct myself in editing. But basically, uh, due to some sort of, due to some sort of experiment with, like, a hamster wheel, uh, Sonic turns blue and, you know, is able to move at the speed of sound. And then, like, Due to some other accident or experiment with the Chaos Emeralds, Ovi Kintobor becomes evil and then decides to rename himself into Evo Robotnik. Um, it's very, very strange, and of course, it is not canon to the entire uh, Sonic, you know, it's not canon to the Sonic games. Before some smart aleck in the comments says something like, you know, everything is canon, it said so on the Sonic Twitter, that was obviously a joke, and as of recent, you know, uh, Sega has been treating the canon of Sonic the Hedgehog with a lot more, uh, you know, seriousness and weight. Um, which is funny to say about the Sonic games, because, you know, you know, on the surface, they're just, you know, platformers about a blue hedgehog, but a lot of people deeply care about the plots of the Sonic the Hedgehog games, myself included. There is a lot of American media made about the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Um, you know, of course, you can't talk about Sonic media made in America without talking about the Archie uh, Sonic comics. Basically, the company Archie... Uh, you know, gained the rights to make comics about, uh, like, based on the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And it originally started out as a gag comic that, you know, told a bunch of jokes and stuff like that. Um, but it eventually turned into, like, this long, like, ongoing drama 
and you know it ended in 2017 and then we later got the idw sonic comics which are really really good i suggest you check them out but yeah there were also the uh uk sonic comics uh which i don't know too much about um but they were quite different from the uh, from the Archie Sonic comics. All I remember about, uh, those comics is that occasionally Sonic was a huge jerk, and also the design for something we're gonna see in Sonic 2 looked really, really dumb. There were also the cartoon shows, uh, based around Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, the first one that always comes to mind, for me at least, is Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which is like a Looney Tunes-style uh, cartoon. It's very lighthearted, very campy, and it always, and every single episode ended with, like, a moral. Like, they had a short segment called Sonic Says, where Sonic and Tails basically teach you, you know, things about life that kids should know, like, don't do drugs or drink alcohol. Um, and, uh, you know, don't be an idiot, uh, you know, when you get a gut feeling that something you're doing is dangerous, you know, get out of there, um, and the most iconic one of those is one where Sonic teaches about the importance of consent. Which is kind of a funny thing to say out loud, but that is a very uh, important thing to, you know, teach people, is that, you know, if you don't want something to happen, you know, you have the right to say no, you should say no, and if someone violates that, seek help immediately. But, you know, that one is very iconic because it ends with Sonic saying something along the lines of, if someone touches you in, uh, in a place that you're uncomfortable with, that's no good. Um, and so that was just, like, clipped and used constantly. I still love that uh, show. I used to watch it all the time when I was younger. And whenever I see clips of it online, I always get super nostalgic. Um, I always feel the same way about stuff like uh, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, because I watched that a ton as a kid. Um, and, you know, the Pokemon anime. I watched the first season of the Pokemon anime like a million times when I was a kid. For the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, I always remember as a kid that I would skip past the live action sections because, I don't know, I just didn't like those. I didn't really think they were funny. Uh, I just thought they were kind of awkward as a kid. And I was like, ah, oh, I just want to get to the cartoons. Those are super cool. Um, I never watched the Zelda cartoon as a kid. And that's just because, like, I could never find a place to watch it. I remember as a kid, I had this thing. It was, like, it was blue, and it was kind of like a laptop, except the only thing it could do was play DVDs and stuff like that. Um, and that's how I watched, like, a few episodes of the Mario, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Like, there's this one where they did an adaptation of... Uh, the story Jack and the Beanstalk, and I watched that a ton on that little thing. I don't even know what the device is called. And then another show that I watched I, on that thing, I only watched like one episode of it, and I don't remember too much, but that other show was Sonic Underground, another uh, animated show from uh, like the very late 90s, I think. And I don't remember too much about it, other than Sonic had two siblings, and the theme song kicked ass. Uh, I've, I've been saying kick ass a lot during this LP, I'll slow down on that. But yeah, I remember the theme song being really good, and pretty much that's, a, that's about it. I remember it didn't really have any favorable reviews, so I never went back and watched any episodes. Um... Also, I believe this boss is called the Eggmobile. Uh, the third, uh, like, 
animated Sonic show from the 90s is just called Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as Sat AM because it was every episode was released on Saturday in the morning. Also, we just got past Labyrinth Zone, so thank gosh for that. That one had um, a lot more of a serious tone to it, whereas stuff like The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was lighthearted, goofy, fun, wacky. Um, Sad AM uh, worried was like focused more on like telling a story of you know all of these animals who were affected by this mad scientist and industrialist who was taking over the whole world and ruining all of these all of the all of these homes for the animals uh, just in it just so he could conquer the world and make lots of money um, I don't think I ever watched any episodes but from what I've heard it's really really good and then uh, there was Sonic X released in the 2000s and that was, and whereas, you know, the previous cartoons I mentioned were more based around the classic Sonic games, the uh, Sonic X was based more around the Adventure Era games, and it even adapted some of the stories like uh, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. I only watched like the first few episodes of season one, and then I watched the the adaptation of Sonic Adventure one because that's my favorite my favorite Sonic game. Um, I I enjoyed it from what I saw. I've heard that the third season is absolutely incredible, so I'll have to get around to checking that out. And then the only up, uh, and then in the twenty tens. Uh, when Sega was kind of trying to reboot the Sonic franchise with the Sonic Boom games, they released a TV show to go along with it, and I never watched that show other than, um, other than, like, maybe one episode one time. I don't know if that series' comedy is for me. It's very, like, self-referential and meta, and I enjoy self-referential and meta stuff, but, like, the way that that series does it is kind of, eh. At least from what I've seen from clips on Twitter. And then, uh, there was Sonic Prime that released, uh, within this decade, I'm pretty sure. I think season three of that show came out this year. I remember watching the first few episodes of that show. Um, I thought it was uh, kind of cool. And then I never really picked it up again. Um, I've heard the third season doesn't really have many favorable reviews. But I don't know, I've never watched it myself, so I can't really give my own review on it. And then this is this technically isn't animated, but it is a TV show, so I'll go into it here. Uh, the Knuckles TV show that came out recently, which is like a sequel to the Sonic 2 movie that came out like a year back or so. Uh, I haven't seen that yet. I haven't even seen the Sonic 2 movie yet, uh, which is weird because it seems like right up my alley. But yeah, I'll have to get around to watching those, and I'll report back to you guys on what I think. And then, while not a show... And then, although it's not a show, it is animated. The Sonic the Hedgehog OVA. Uh, this was like a two-part sort of movie. Uh, it was about Sonic the Hedgehog. It was about, it's sort of like a weird alternate universe. It doesn't really have many concepts from the games other than the characters. Uh, it has some very iconic moments like uh, when Sonic is facing off against Metal Sonic and he's being, and he's like, 
you might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not gonna help you because I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Or something like that, something really cheesy. I don't know, I loved that thing. It was great. Um, there was this weird, like, anime cat girl in there, and she was weird. Not a big fan of her. I think Sonic looks up her skirt at one point. Very strange. Uh, this is the Egg Spiker, I think is the name of this boss. Up until, like... The Sonic games have always had very strange, like, boss names, because... And the one that I always remember is one from Sonic Triple Trouble. It's like this train thing, and its official name is, like... Marva Shapopolis Go or something like that. It's super stupid and weird. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Sonic Triple Trouble and Sonic Chaos. Maybe I'll get around to playing those on the channel someday. We are kind of speeding through these, uh, no pun intended, but we are speeding through these levels now. It's just Labyrinth Zone, Labyrinth Zone that's super duper long and annoying. Uh, in fact, we're actually getting to the last, like, main zone here, uh, which actually has a really cool name. Scrap Brain Zone. Also has this really cool aesthetic. You, you might have noticed that as we've, uh, gone through this game, we've gotten less, uh, like, we've gotten less natural and more artificial. So we started off in Green Hill... And, you know, we go through some ru some ancient ruins, um, and then we start seeing some cities, and then we reached here. The only one that stands out is, uh, Labyrinth Zone, but that's because that was originally going to be the second level in the game, uh, you know, before Marble Zone. So if that, w if that was in the place it was originally going to be, um, it would've... It would have, like, kept that theme going of slowly transitioning from, you know, the natural to the artificial. Anyways, what was I talking about before? I think I was talking about the Sonic OVA. I, th I thought it was really cool. I'd suggest checking it out. I remember, um, one of the songs being really, really good. I'll be sure to let you know what it is in post, because I sure as hell don't remember the, the name of it. Let's see, what's some other official Sonic media that I can talk about? Oh yeah, there's the, uh, Sonic movie. I've, I've watched the first Sonic movie. And, you know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cool. Contained a lot of references to the games. Uh... But I haven't seen the second movie, like I mentioned. I haven't seen the Knuckles TV show, like I mentioned. Apparently, apparently the third movie is going to be an adaptation of Sonic Adventure 2, so that's cool. These, like, rotating disc things that I'm on right now, these are always really cool. You curl up into a ball on them, you spin around and around, and if you have good timing, you can throw yourself up or whatever direction you want to go. I love the Sonic franchise, but I need to get around to playing more of the games, because I haven't, uh, in terms of mainline games, I haven't finished Heroes, I haven't played 06, because there's not really a good place to play it, as far as I'm aware. Um, let's see. I haven't played Unleashed yet, although Sega, please re-release that game for PC and do a good job at it, please. Because from what I've seen, that game looks sick. Like, the Werehog stages don't look like they're the coolest, but but the daytime stages look like they're some of the best, like, boost-era Sonic games, like, out there. Because... The other Boost Era games all have this problem of kind of feeling linear. 
a bit when playing through them. Even Sonic Generations, which, um, which I really liked, always felt a bit, maybe linear isn't the word, but like, I don't know, Sonic Unleashed just seems like it has a lot more that it wants you to do while you're playing it. So we just reached act, the end of Act 2. So, what's Act 3 like? Welcome to Scrap Brain Zone Act 3, or as I like to call it, Labyrinth Zone Act 4. This is the worst. They brought back the worst zone for the final level. Why? I don't like this at all. There actually is a way to clear this pretty quickly, but if you don't know that, then this level can be absolute agony. And even if you do know the level, sometimes the... Even if you do know the path, sometimes the level design can screw you over and just not be that fun. I think I'm going the right way. True to its name, Labyrinth Zone is quite the labyrinth. So yeah, now we're at the very end. We get up to these springs, hop on them, and we're at the final zone. We have to face off against the final boss of the game, the Egg Crusher. These purple balls will sort of fly down from the ceiling, and just roll out of the way, um, or if you're playing the original version of the game, just run out of the way. And then hope that Eggman is nearby so you can jump at him. And then just rinse and repeat until you beat him. There actually is a glitch in the original version of this game where for the final hit, if you hit him twice, there's some sort of like overflow thing where, you know, the game just doesn't register that you've hit him for the final time. And so the boss fight just becomes infinitely long and you have to wait for time to run out. By the way, if the timer up in the top left gets gets up to 10 minutes, uh, you die. It's like a, like a safety measure of sorts just to, you know, make sure you're not stuck in levels and also to punish you if you're in a level for 10 minutes or longer. because Sonic levels shouldn't be 10 minutes long, unless you're Sonic Heroes, apparently. Okay, I promise that'll be the last time I take a shot at Sonic Heroes. I don't, like, despise that game or anything. It's just, again, not for me. I always, like, seen... I've always seen that thing in the background as a face, like the two purple things right there as eyes, and then the red thing there as a nose, and then the mouth down at the bottom. If you haven't seen that before, then you'll probably never be able to unsee it now. That's the final hit! Eggman comes down the side here, hops into his Eggmobile, we hit him one last time, and that is the end of Sonic the Hedgehog. The video game, not the character. So yeah, that has been the first ever Sonic the Hedgehog game. Now you can kind of see why I wanted to do all of the games in the Origins collection as one collective LP, because if I did them separately, all of them would only be like two or three episodes long. Anyways, going back and playing this game, usually when I go back to play this on my own, I don't have too fun of a time. It's fun revisiting Green Hill Zone and going up against the different bosses and stuff like that. 
but usually I don't have too fun of a time because I like the levels in Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 a lot more, and I just think a bunch of things in those games are really fun. But you know what? Going back through this game and having you guys here with me to go through this adventure, it wasn't all that bad, and I genuinely mean that. Being here and talking to you guys, this whole thing went by in a flash. I'm not the post I'm not the most patient guy in the world. Like I try to be very patient with people, but when it comes to waiting around in video games and stuff like that, uh, or just waiting around in general, things in my brain seem a lot longer than they usually are, so maybe that's in part why I didn't really I don't really enjoy going back to this one. But yeah, I genuinely do think this was a blast. Thank you for joining me here today. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time for the next game in the Sonic Origins collection. Goodbye.